This is our last video in the stoichiometry unit, and in this video we're going to start looking at the relationships between gas volumes and the other things on our flow chart. So let's start off by talking about, uh, by looking at our flow chart. You can see that I have added here, again we've got volume, and you can see I've got a little picture of something that looks like a gas, and we've got a different conversion factor, so we're going to talk about that. But you can see that this volume at the bottom with molarity, that's a, a solution volume. The volumes at the top are the gas volumes, and I'll, we'll talk about how to tell the difference. So gas volumes can change a lot based on pressure. So if you increase the pressure on a gas, you decrease the volume. Uh, also temperature, if you increase the temperature of a gas, it gives you a larger volume or the amount of gas. And so in order to make life easier, what we do is we define a standard. We say that standard pressure is one atmosphere, which is typical atmospheric pressure, and standard temperature is zero degrees C. So when we talk about gases, it's called STP, standard temperature and pressure. And that just takes two variables out of the equation. And so we can set up a simple relationship between volume and moles. The volume of one mole of gas is equal to 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure, or STP. STP is one atmosphere and zero degrees C, not 22.4 liters. You will likely be asked what standard temperature and pressure are. And if you look on your front page of your reference table, it gives you those conditions. 22.4 liters is the volume of one mole of gas. So I have a little ball that I'll show you in class that has 22.4 liters of gas so you can see how big one mole is. Uh, it's on the reference table below the standard temperature and pressure conditions. And we can use that to convert uh, from moles to volume of gas. So let's take a look at our first example. Remember that with these stoichiometry problems, our first step is always to set up the balanced chemical reaction. So let's do that first. Remember that you should be trying this yourself and then checking to see that you got it correct. All right, so in this problem, we're being asked how much oxygen gas is required to completely burn a, a liter of propane. So we've got propane and oxygen burning. And so hopefully you recognize that that is a combustion reaction and its products are going to be CO2 and H2O. And let's go ahead and balance that. Uh, first we're going to balance our carbon, so I'm going to put a 3 here. And then my hydrogen, so I'm going to put a 4 here. And then if I look on the right, I've got 6 plus 4 hydrogen, so I need 10 so I can put a 5 in front of my O2. So let's go back to the flow chart for just a minute. All right, so if you look at what we're going to do on the flow chart, we're going to go from our volume of propane to our moles of propane using our moles of gas at STP, the one mole equals 22.4 liters. Then we're going to go from moles of propane to our moles of oxygen using the mole ratio from the balanced reaction we just wrote. Then we're going to go from moles of oxygen to volume of oxygen using our one mole equals 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. So let's go back and figure out how to work that. All right, so we're going to start with our one liter of propane. And our first conversion factor is going to be from liters to moles. Now this is where you have to pay attention. Because this is a gas, we want to use our one mole as 22.4 liters. So we need liters of propane on the bottom to cancel. And we're going to moles of propane. And we know that one mole has a volume of 22.4 liters. This is fairly straightforward when you recognize when to use that conversion factor. And then we want to use our mole to mole ratio from our balanced reaction. So we're going to go from moles of propane to moles of oxygen. That comes from our balanced reaction. And we know that for every mole of propane we have, we need five moles of oxygen to react with it. And then our last step is going to be to convert to 
our volume of oxygen gas. So it's going to be moles of O2 on the bottom, liters of O2 on the top, and we know that one mole has a volume of 22.4 liters. Now you may be looking at this and saying, hey, wait a minute, I can cancel these. So we want to do that uh, in this case. So here the 22.4s will cancel, and our answer is just 1 times 5, so we've got 5.0 liters, remember sig figs, of oxygen. So it is unlikely that you will see a lot of problems that have a gas to gas conversion. This is just to show you how that works. So let's take a look at some other examples. Alright, so we'll go ahead and write the balanced reaction for this one. All right, so this tells you in the video in the All right, so this tells you in the problem that this is a decomposition reaction. So potassium chlorate, potassium is a plus 1. Chlorate's a minus 1, so it's KClO3. And it decomposes to give you oxygen. And then uh, if you look at your decomposition reactions on your reference table, it also gives you potassium chloride. So let's go ahead and balance this. This is one where we're going to balance our oxygen first. I've got three on the left, so I'm going to put a two there, and two on the right, so I'm going to put a three there. And then I can just balance my KCl with a two there. Uh, remember that potassium is a plus one, chloride is a minus one. We're being given the mass of potassium chlorate and we're being asked for the volume of oxygen gas. So we're going to take our mass of potassium chlorate, we're going to convert it to moles of potassium chlorate. Then we're going to use our mole ratio to convert potassium chlorate, moles of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen. And then we're going to calculate our volume of oxygen gas based on the fact that at STP one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters. So let's start off with our mole conversion of our grams of KClO3. So our first step, we're going to put grams of KClO3 on the bottom to cancel, and moles of KClO3 on top. And we know that one mole of KClO3 has a molar mass of 122.55. When you add up that K, Cl and three oxygens, just using our molar mass like we have been. Then we're going to set up another conversion factor with moles of KClO3, and then we're going to go to moles of oxygen, and again that comes from our balanced reaction. So we know that two moles of KClO3 will produce three moles of oxygen from our reaction. And then our last step is talking about the volume of oxygen gas. So we're going to convert from moles of oxygen gas, so moles on the bottom to cancel, and we're going to go to liters of O2, and we know that at STP one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. So put that in your calculator, and you should get 0 0.823 liters of oxygen. All right, let's try another problem. So in this problem, we're being given a volume of gas, and we're going to go from the volume of CO2 to the moles of CO2 using our volume at STP of one mole. Then we're going to go from moles of CO2 to moles of NaOH using that mole to mole ratio. And then we're going to go from moles of NaOH to grams of NaOH using our molar mass. So let's go ahead and write our balanced reaction. It says what mass of sodium hydroxide is needed to completely react with carbon, sorry, carbon dioxide, so NaOH plus CO2, if sodium hydrogen carbonate is formed. And the nice thing about this equation is that it's already balanced, so let's go ahead and set up our problem. So we've got two liters of CO2 and we're going to convert from liters to moles, so liters of CO2 to moles of CO2, that's always going to be our first step. And we know that one mole has a volume of 22.4 liters of gas at STP. 
and then our next step is going to be to go from moles of CO2 to moles of NaOH, so moles of CO2 on the bottom to cancel, moles of NaOH on top, and that comes from our balanced reaction. One mole of CO2 requires one mole of NaOH to react with it. And then our last step is going to be our conversion from moles of NaOH to grams of NaOH. So moles of NaOH on the bottom to cancel, grams of NaOH on top, and we know from adding up our masses of sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen that one mole of NaOH has a molar mass of 39.998. And when you put that into your calculator, you should get, with correct sig figs, 3.57 grams of NaOH. So hopefully you're getting fairly comfortable with this. Let's look at another problem. All right, so remember that when we talk about these problems that have excess calcium, that just means that it has enough to react with whatever it's with and more so that, and that everything is fully reacted. So in this case, we're going from a volume of a solution, here's a volume, and this is hydrochloric acid, which would be a, a solution, to a volume of a gas. So we're going from that bottom volume on your flow chart to the top volume. So let's look at that. So in this case, we're being given a volume of our uh, solution of hydrochloric acid. So we're going to convert to moles of hydrochloric acid using our molarity from our problem. Then we're going to go from moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of hydrogen gas using our mole to mole ratio from our balanced reaction. And then we're going to go from moles of hydrogen to volume of hydrogen using our one mole is equal to 22.4 liters at STP. So let's take a look at that. All right. So first step is always to write that balanced reaction. So hydrochloric acid reacts with excess calcium. And it says volume of hydrogen gas is produced, so we know that hydrogen is going to be a product. And I hope that you're looking at this and saying that looks like a single replacement. So calcium replaces hydrogen, so you're going to have calcium chloride as your other product. Calcium has a 2 plus charge. Uh, chlorine has a 1 minus, so you're going to have calcium chloride, CaCl2. And so let's go ahead and start that uh, by balancing. You can see that if you put a 2 in front of the HCl here, that gives you the balanced reaction. So we're going to start off with our volume of our hydrochloric acid, 22.5 milliliters. Remember that when we're dealing with molarity, we always need to convert to liters first. So any of these stoichiometry problems, you'll want to convert from milliliters to liters. So that's milliliters of HCl to liters of HCl. Remember that your scientific notation for milli is 1 times 10 to the negative third, and that goes with your base unit, which is the one without the prefix. All right, so then we want to go from liters of HCl to moles of HCl using our molarity, and that's in our problem. Remember that the 1.50 goes with the moles, that's the number of moles, in one liter. So that's our molarity to convert to moles. Then we're going to use our mole to mole ratio from our balanced reaction. So we're going to go from moles of HCl to moles of hydrogen. And we know that for every two moles of HCl we use, that one mole of hydrogen will be produced. And then our last step will be converting from moles of hydrogen gas and then converting to our liters of hydrogen gas. And again, for this we're using our one mole equals 22.4 liters of gas at standard temperature and pressure. When you punch that one into your calculator, you should get 0 0.378 liters of hydrogen. And again, if you're coming up with some different answers or you don't understand something, please come and ask me in class.